uh, HIV, human immunodeficiency virus. Human immunodeficiency virus is actually first appeared in 1983, uh, found by the very important person, Dr. Luce Moten Guinier from Pasteur Institute, Paris. He also got a Nobel Prize in nine, uh, 2008 for this work, along with Harvard uh, jury uh, from Germany, uh, Harvard and other, other two people with, uh, from Germany and from one of the colleagues from his own institution. Now, this is also called as a acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, mainly because they, they displace the immune cells, that is CD4 cells are uh, mainly affected in this particular syndrome, appear to have a marked reduction in CD4 cell number. That was a first diagnostic marker which has been shown in the HIV patient. The causative agent of HIV is a retrovirus bearing a genomic structure to identical single standard ribonucleic RNA molecules. It is the RNA virus. So we need to have all the RNA assays, not the DNA assays. So we have all the RT-PCR and real-time PCR for our using the RNA. The HIV progress through three stages, mainly the acute infection, chronic infection, and then further to the, it is developed to the ad. In the acute infection stage, you can, you can definitely evaluate the stage by counting the CD4 cells. And then further, there is a viral load. I'm coming to that. The acute infection stage has a large viral load, is highly contagious. So you, it is very, very dangerous. In chronic stage, the viral load is less than acute stage with the individual still bearing a contagiousness but maybe asymptomatic. He doesn't have much, much symptom. However, the final stage is called as AIDS, occurs when the CD4 cell count is below 200 cells per mm. And when opportunities infection like HCV, HBV also be appears along with this. So this is the basic thing which we see generally in, in HIV patients, you know. So, but diagnosis is very, very easy. If you have CD4 count less than 200, 200 counts, then definitely he has a, he has AIDS symptoms. Now, if you globally, if you see the statistic of uh, global uh, from WHO World Health Organization, you can see there are about 37 million people are so far affected with the HIV with 1.5 million every year it is coming out and that we have to reduce. And about uh, this is a 6,80,000 last, last year, 20, 2020, there is a death. And major region is South Africa. You know that this is a region where there is a more, more prominency of HIV scenes. Now here in this picture also, you can see various region of world where there is a high incidence. This is South Africa region, which is having a, then Asian countries, USA. Then uh, here you see that there is a zero, zero percent of HIV. And really, if these populations, if you are a scientist, these populations are very, very interesting to study because these people may be having a CCFR mutation or something, some problem. But I have never, I want to see now this uh, particular area's research on HIV, you know, because uh, this is a very interesting area to study. And that is the major concept which I am going to talk today's talk. Okay, so basic tests required for diagnosis of HIV are only CD4 count. If normal count will be there about 500 to 150 copies, it is normal. It is a totally normal eh, individual. Now, if somebody has HIV infection, the copy number will vary from 200 to 500 copies and need antiviral therapy. And antiviral therapy is a long-term therapy. It is a lifelong therapy given to the patient. And that is the one of the reason that we need to have the better therapy, which, which ends with the the uh, further use of antiviral therapy because there are so many side effects. The cost wise, also it is very important. Second assay, which gives a perfect, perfect uh, amount of copies of viruses in the body, that is called a real time PCR. This particular assay I have developed in Just Look Hospital in 2006. You know, that time nobody was knowing real time PCR. Now everyone, every person, every small kid also know what is real time PCR because of the COVID pandemic you know, and they know what is the viral load, what is the uh, CT value and all these things. But still they don't know much about viral load because in that they are not mentioning viral load. Now, if you see no viral load, zero copies, that means he is negative. 
viral load which is having 10 copies it is having a mild infection and uh, you can just have the basic treatment and when the viral load is more than 1 lakh and above or uh, something and above severely affected so this is a monitoring very well known monitoring system for this and we in my laboratory also i have several patients i have seen they are responding to the antiviral treatment they are drug resistance developed drug resistance after a few years but that can also be have the basic problem which are changing the therapy various drugs are there there are more than 20 25 drugs are already anti viral therapies drugs are already been seen in the market now, what is the role of stem cell therapy in HIV infection? You know, that is the today's topic which we are going to talk. Now, you see, human uh, HIV infection is major global public health issue. And the only treatment available is a antiviral therapy. I already talked with you, which need to be taken for lifelong with many issues with compliance and side effects. So how we can go better way therapy than this is the stem cell therapy. In recent years, stem cell therapy has shown promising results in HIV management, and it can have major impact on future of HIV treatment and prevention. The idea behind anti-HIV hem hematopoietic stem progenitor cells, HSPC, short form directed gene therapy, is to genetically engineer patient-derived autologous HSPC to acquire an inheritance resistance to the HIV infection. This is, I am going to in, uh, tell you about this in net, next, uh, this thing. You know, you can very clearly see how this particular concept has been worked in our uh, same stem, stem cell therapy. Now, multiple stem cell based gene therapy strategies have been suggested that may interfere HIV resistance, including anti HIV gene reagents, gene combination strategies giving rise to the anti HIV gene modified HSP. So, this, this is another concept we are trying to, that they are making a mutation. That study also, I will talk to the scientists who are working in this area. I can give you the brief idea about this thing. They are all listed on the internet, all articles. These stem cells can hamper HIV progression in body by interpreting by key stage of HIV or repression. These are the major steps. You know, what is, what is we required is that we want to stop the entry. We want to stop the proliferation. We want to stop those different signaling pathways, which has been HIV due to the entry of HIV has to be there. So these three concepts we have to keep in mind to have the develop the therapy in HIV. Now stem cell therapy in HIV infection. These are the major already I have talked about the uh, CCR5 Delta 3 homogeneous. The stem cell therapy involves transplanting stem cells from donor who has 16, 16 chemokine receptor 5 that is called CCR5. I will mention this in every time. Delta 32 homogeneous to an HIV infected patient. Now, you we will come to know the, how the HIV mechanism comes, and there you will see the what is the role of CCR5 in this entry of the HIV. Then another is implementing modality is establishing stem cell induced HIV resistance via transplanting HIV fusion competitive inhibitors through the stem cell. This also I have talked to you about. This is another path, pathway we can stop the HIV cells to enter. <laughs>